everybody. My name is Leonel Martinez, and I will be my speech presentation to you will be over the Catharanthus roseus. So the Catharanthus roseus is a flowering plant, but it's better known as a rosy periwinkle. So the rosy periwinkle can be seen growing in gardens and also parks, and you can even see them growing in different sidewalks for use for decoration. But its main purpose nowadays is really used for medicinal properties. But back in the day, they would use, back in my parents' home country that is, they would use these flowers, the flower of this plant along with the leaf, and they would bring it into a boil. So whenever anybody would have sore throats or symptoms of laryngitis, when they would boil all these together, they would make a gargle and they would gargle these for a few days. So gradually, the symptoms of the laryngitis or the sore throat would go away. So that's how a lot of uh, different countries figured out that they had medicinal properties. But this, the Catharanthus roseus has been going on for research for a few years now, and doctors have found out that the leaves of the Catharanthus roseus has around 70 different alkaloids. So one of the alkaloids that is in the leaves of this plant is, is vinblastine, and it's vinblastine is one of the main ingredients in a cancer medicine that is used for leukemia because it is found that the vinblastine lowers the white blood cell count in the patients that have taken it, and it's been seen to help out a lot in the past years. So as far as location goes, the Catharanthus roseus is native to Madagascar, but of course it has emigrated to different parts of the world, but mainly thrives in the tropics and subtropics. So as we can see that the tropics these are these here, and the subtropics, which are going to be right above and right below these red lines, are really near the equator. And since so this plant is a perennial, it is going to leave. It is going to need long amounts of sun exposure for it to thrive and survive. Um, as we see here, it's mainly going to be mainly focused in an area of south of North America, which are going to be the southern states and south of South America, along with south parts of Africa, Australia, and the middle parts of the Middle East and southern parts of Asia. So we can also see in here, it's gonna be, we're gonna talk about the Linnaean classification. So of course, since this is a plant, it is gonna be considered into the domain eukarya because it is multicellular, and it's gonna be considered in the kingdom plantae because this plant is a plant and is considered an autotroph. As far as phylum goes, it is going to be considered in the phylum Magnoliophyta. So the Magnoliophyta phylum is one of one of the largest divisions of the phylums that divide in, from the kingdoms, and it is considered Magnoliophyta because it is a flowering plant and it is it does have a seed that is encased in an ovary. As far as class, it's going to be classified into Magnoliocida. So it's classified into Magnolia seed because it does have a cotyledon, or better known to the common world, as a, it's like a two segments of, inside the seed of embryonic leaves. So that's what um, classifies it into Magnolia seed. As, as far as order goes, it's going to be ordered into gentianeals. So the gentianeals are basically plants that, have two or more leaves growing from each node, which is, it, it's, it has around three, three leaves, I would say, that are gonna grow from, a, from the node. As far as family goes, it's gonna be considered in the Apostinaceae Apostinace family. So it's considered the Apostinaceae family because the Catharanthus roseus is technically an herb since we do use it for medicinal purposes, but it's also, kind of it grows into a shrub-like manner. So that's why it's part of the family of Possumacy. As far as genus goes, it's considered Catharanthus because the species is um, part of the perennial genus. So it falls into that part as well as also from what I read, the Catharanthus is also part of the Madagascar region. So as far as species goes, it's going to be, of course, the genus and the specific epithet. So it's going to, as I said previously, that Catharanthus specifies mainly the genus of it being in Madagascar because it, it was 
previously known as Vinca roseas, but they changed this into Catharanthus because they realized that there were a lot more species of these different rose of these different periwinkles. And here we see that the we have a phylogenetic tree. Of course, we're going to have it in the eukarya, and it's going to branch out. This would technically be considered one of the basal taxas. It'll be Archaeoplastida, which is one of the protists, one of the ancestors of the plants, closest ancestor that is. It would, of course, move on into the, down into the plantae. And as I said previously, plantae is also going to move down into Magnolia phyta. It's going to be two, considered the sister taxa. Uh, we're going to have the monocotyledon and the eudicotyledon. So the Catharanthus roseus is going to be considered in the eudicotyledon because it is also, as, as I now am going to mention, it is uh, dichotic. So the, it's eudicotyledon because it does have the two segments and it's going to branch out into the, the sorry, it's going to branch out into the embryonic leaves. Um, we also see that the eudicotyledon, well, you don't see that. The eudicotyledon is going to be considered, also it's going to have like net-like uh, veins extending from the leaves. This will branch out down into the gentianeals. As I previously mentioned, it's going to be considered gentianeals because it has the different nodes from different, at least two or more leaves branching out from the nodes. And then it was going to come down into the posinaceae and down, as I previously mentioned, to the catharanthus and the catharanthus roseus. And then we were going to move on to the life cycle. So the life cycle of the Catharanthus roseus is like every other plant that it starts, you know, of course, first in the ovary, and then the microspores are going to come from the anther. So we see here that the anther, of course, is going to be the male, and the in the ovary you're going to have the ovule. But in, the interesting thing about this cat, this species of uh, plant is that it also can do intra-flower pollination. So the reason being is because the style of the Catharanthus roseus is slightly longer as well as the um, ovary of the Catharanthus roseus also slightly longer. So they tend to reach sort of really close to the anther, so they're kind of like intra-pollination, which is really interesting. But the normal, it also goes through normal pollination, which would be like the as you see here, the sperm would reach into the stigma and the pollen tube would go down into the ovary and then it would fertilize and turn into an embryo sac and it would grow into a seed and it's gonna have the endosperm inside, which is the food that it's gonna feed off of. And later on, it, obviously it's gonna germinate and it's gonna grow. So that was my presentation.